Welcome! Today we're gonna build a $420 gaming PC with only new parts. Let's begin with the motherboard. This is an H410MH from Azrock. We got it from a local shop for about $65, and I'm aware that it's an extremely budget motherboard, but we are on a really tight budget, so it will just have to do for now. Besides, We'll be installing an i3-10100F CPU here, so having a more expensive motherboard won't really do too much, if anything, at all. We bought this CPU on eBay for $50. We'll be cooling it with this Deepcool AG200 CPU cooler that we got for $10. In terms of thermal paste, you guys can use anything you like, really. Nowadays, a lot of CPU coolers even come with their own thermal paste, which are more than fine for this kind of build but I personally like GD900, so that's what we're gonna be using today. For the case, I went for this WJ Coolman DT M2, and I know that I use the same cases quite often, but it's honestly a really good case. For just 30 US dollars, we get tempered glass, filters everywhere, detachable hard drive tray, PSU shroud, and of course, the side panel that opens like a door. You guys won't believe just how big of a selling point this side panel is. People here just seem to really like that feature in particular. We'll be installing 5 of these EasyCloud rainbow LED fans in our case. 3 of them will be set to intake, 1 will be an exhaust, and the last one will be installed under the GPU. We paid $20 for these fans in total. In terms of storage, I wanted to go for an M.2 NVMe SSD, but the prices here were just too high, so I went for this 480GB SATA SSD from Team Group instead. It's honestly one of the most reliable budget SATA SSDs that I have ever used. We bought it for $28. And speaking of budget and reliable stuff, let's talk about this deep cool PF500 power supply. I've heard that this brand got sanctioned in a few countries, but that's not the case here and I really hope that it continues to be so, because I don't know what other brands I would have to buy from. Deepcool is the only reliable brand that provides cheap power supplies to our country. Stuff like Apivia, EVGA W3 and many other budget reliable power supplies are not available here, so if our country decides to sanction Deepcool as well, we'll basically have no other good alternatives left. For this particular PSU, we paid $40. The RAM that we'll be using in our system is a 16GB kit from Ting Group, clocked at 3200MHz. We paid $27 for it. And yes, it's pretty basic and unattractive, but like I mentioned before, we are on a really tight budget, and if we wanna build a new system for just $420, we have to make these decisions and save money whenever we can. And finally, the star of the show, RTX 3050. This whole build actually started with this GPU. Long story short, this one guy bought an RTX 3050, thinking that it would be better than his GTX 1080, which it wasn't by the way. RTX 3050 is quite a bit weaker than a GTX 1080. And this is an 8GB version that we're talking about. The 6GB one is even worse. So after seeing these results, the guy decided to sell his 3050 right away, literally a day after he bought it. Initially, he had it listed for $180, which was a bit too expensive for me, so I let it sit for a few days, and eventually he lowered the price down to $150, and once I saw that, I just went there and bought it right away. Now I understand that some people will say that this GPU isn't technically brand new, but it is as close to brand new as it can get. Besides, what other choices do we have? If we're trying to build a computer with new parts, the next best choice that we have is either a 6GB RTX 3050 or an RX 6500 XT, both of which are terrible choices. RTX 20 series and their predecessor GPUs have already been discontinued, which means that we are extremely limited on what we can buy if we wanna build a $420 gaming PC with only new parts. So now that we are done building the computer, why don't we take it for a spin and see how it performs in games.
Let's begin with CS2. We are running this game on the highest settings at 1080p resolution. Normally, I like testing this game on lower settings, but today I decided to max everything out and see how this PC would perform, and as expected, it had no issues achieving 100 plus FPS. On average, we got around 118 FPS in this 10 minute deathmatch. Forza Horizon 5 Here I went with the high preset and turned ray tracing off. After a few runs of this built-in benchmark, we averaged around 95 FPS. Doom Eternal On the highest settings at 1080p resolution, the computer had no issues achieving 100 plus FPS. After fighting with the monsters for about 5 or so minutes, we averaged a solid 145 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2 Here I chose the number 5 preset at 1080p resolution. At first, I thought the FPS would go below 60 in the crowded areas, but surprisingly, it stayed above 70 at all times. At the end, we averaged a solid 80 FPS. Hogwarts Legacy a new addition to our benchmarks. I've actually been playing this game non-stop the past few days, and I thought it would be a good idea to test it on our new system. After messing with the graphics for a short while, I decided to set them to medium, because higher settings were giving us less than 60 FPS and lower settings were not too visually pleasing. After running around for a few minutes, we averaged 62 FPS. Sons of the Forest another modern game that ran pretty well on this computer. On medium settings at 1080p resolution, we achieved 66 FPS on average. I was honestly expecting a few starters here and there, but surprisingly, the game ran without a single starter whatsoever. Cyberpunk will be our last game for today's benchmarks. Here I just kept the settings to medium, since this game can be quite taxing on the hardware, especially in heavily crowded areas. After driving around for about 10 or so minutes, we averaged a solid 65 FPS. Until this point, I thought that it was a coincidence that this PC was showing less starters than the RTX 2060 PC that we built a few weeks ago. But after running multiple tests and playing these games for a few hours, all I can say is that RTX 3050 had a lot more stable frame time than RTX 2060. Overall, I think we built a really good budget gaming PC. Shame that RTX 3050s are so expensive nowadays, hence why so many people consider it a bad GPU. Personally, I don't think there's such thing as a bad product, there is only a bad price. But tell me what you think, would you build a computer like this and are you satisfied with the results that we saw today? On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.